Hey, everybody, a pleasant good day. Welcome into the next edition of the Grittiest Take brought to you by Sports Fanatic News and also the wonderful, of course, Steel Flyers website I share and have all my great stuff there. This is the Don Steel Flyers on here to go over the Central Division like we did the Scotia North Division for you yesterday and went up from Ottawa into Montreal since those are the teams I think that would actually move people recommending some defensemen the Flyers could go after. So now we'll go with the Central Division and recommend some defensemen the Flyers can go after. Uh, but first things first, uh, Steele, how are you doing on this fine Sunday? The weather's been pretty nice lately. I know. I can't believe it. It's like yesterday was the first day of spring. It was a beautiful day. It's a little bit chilly, but the sun's out and uh, the birds are chirping and the windows are open and it's a beautiful day. And boy, I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful day for hockey and I can't wait to start getting into some of this stuff, man, for real. I'm ready to go. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. Doing well, doing well. It's always exciting to talk some hockey. And uh, it's great that, you're right, it's a beautiful day for hockey. Um, the Phantoms are going to be back. Um, Sam yeah, uh, Wise yeah, is yeah. covering her first game. Definitely congratulations, check congratulations. Yeah, congratulations to her. And check out her coverage uh, for the Phantoms yeah, game exciting. today. The That's Flyers exciting. Nitty Gritty via uh, all the Flyers Nitty Gritty pages so um definitely check her out and check her pages out um she does great coverage uh, for them as well but we'll get into who we think the flyers could acquire we'll start working our way up from the bottom of the standings of the division up like i did last time the detroit red wings obviously acquired a lot of guys in the mid-season review i did for them like i said to potentially move steve eiserman did a good job at getting guys that could get him more draft assets when they already have good draft assets because they have three second round picks this year and two thirds. So he now has a guy in Mark Stahl who actually has overperformed this year. Maybe if they eat some of his contract, they could trade the final year of his contract where he was a guy you didn't think that would necessarily be the case with. John Murrow is a guy I think you brought in thinking you could move as time went on. Um, he's more of a guy in a good defense that I guess is a, somewhat like defensive uh ended guy that can give you some offense that he's also just his issue is he's also left-handed uh he's played pretty well but he could bring that stability defensive wise he's more of a defensive yeah. defenseman mm -hmm. that the flyers could use he's a guy i think detroit uh would maybe maybe trade and be a guy they could get and would not mess them up in expansion since stall I would need them to eat a lot of the contract still because five seven if you want to get a forward still as well that adds some tenacity to your team yeah. that really limits you unless if they eat a good amount. John Murrow only gets paid nine hundred and twenty five K is a plus four this year and has been performing fairly well. What do you think of the possibility of him? I don't think it would take a lot to get either. Yeah, I'm with you on that, too. And see, that's going to be the thing about Detroit. They have a lot of space, cap space, so they have a lot of money. But almost their entire team is either going to be a UFA or an RFA next year. Okay, Either this year or, or by the end of next year. Right, 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 right. So after either after this year or the following year, most of all their team is either going to need to be re-signed or whatever the case is, is with that. Um. If John Merrill is available, okay, he's, but okay, I I can understand why because he is a plus four, he's relatively cheap, and we only have to be really on the hook for half of a half, so really only a quarter of salary. Yeah, and also he's a guy the Flyers don't really need anybody that has offensive savvy when they trade for this defenseman. They just need a good defensive defenseman, and that's pretty much what Merrill's been because the other guy I was going to bring up with the uh, Red Wings is Nemeth on the last year of his deal at the age of 29 or so, Patrick Nemeth, who is a little bit bigger, the 6'3", almost 230-pound Swede that uses his body well, block shots has been a pretty consistent defensive defenseman that in some years for the Avalanche produced team points in one season, but is more of a defensive guy. He's another guy. He's just also left-handed where the Flyers could maybe use a righty too, but uh, he plays a pretty decent defensive solid game. The reason why I wouldn't necessarily go after Nemeth though is you already have Hag. He'll be back in three weeks. 
they're somewhat similar type players where John Merrill is a little bit more of a, even though he's 6'3", he's only in the 190s, so he's a little bit more fluid of a skater and moves a little bit quicker than the John Murrells and the, or not the John Murrells, than the Pat Nemes and Robert Hags of the world. I, so I, I think you. he differs enough of a defensive defenseman that if you have him and Hag not on the same line, obviously, but in the same lineup, that wouldn't be off where having Nemeth, you, if you, unless if you put him with maybe Myers, then you could put Hag with someone else. That would be a little bit of a, almost similar um, defenseman. See, Nemeth yeah, that's why, a, yeah, that's why I would better inversion of Hag. I'm with you. And to be honest with you, man, there's, there's a player on this team that I think I would much rather have, and it's not a defenseman. Oh, yeah, but we'll save that because we're going to do forward predictions. And hopefully I'm with you. I'm with you. That. And that's why that's why I'm pretty much just going to leave my comments about Detroit at that. Um, I'm, I'm not real well, excited about the prospects of of John Merrill or Patrick Nemeth. I, I get what you're saying, and I do. Some of those matchups could work with oh, Myers. Not, I and, don't think they're the best guys to get. The purpose of these videos is just um, like I did yesterday. Some of the guys I recommended, like I said, the guys that I recommended from other teams, I would want a lot more than some from others. Like the Ottawa guys, I wouldn't want as much as some of the guys I recommended from – uh, Vancouver, to be example, or Victor Mete, uh, who I really like in the defense. Yeah. Riley, I do like from Ottawa, and Artem Zub would be. Oh, yeah. Top top yeah, yeah, yeah. Really I'm with you on both of those. Yeah. Get them. But uh, the purpose of these videos is just kind of to go over each team and who I think the Flyers could maybe, who could help them in some capacity on defense. Okay. From that. I, I think. Uh, Merle and Nemeth could both help them in some capacity. It definitely wouldn't be to the oomph of the Jommersons of the world or the Demirs of the world that we'll get to in later videos. But I just think in a capacity of being more defensive minded, that's all the Flyers need. They could help. And then um, your dreamer trade that would never happen would be if for some reason the Red Wings want to trade Shalowski or Hironic. Uh, but that ain't happening. That, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Those would really be, you know, the ones. But um, Well, yeah, Zub, you at least have some, maybe, if Nashville, or not Nashville, if uh, Ottawa wanted to trade him. That's why I threw him in there, because he's undrafted. They're not going anywhere in a couple years where the Flyers are going somewhere a bit sooner. Maybe they could do that. But we'll move on to Dave Poley, the uh, long-tenured Dave Poley, uh, Nashville Predators team. Um Led by John Hines, who is not one of my favorite head coaches, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they have a good, decent pick order as well. They have two fours and then just have all of their picks besides the seventh that they traded in a past trade. Um, when it comes to the Predators, obviously, when you look at them, I think there's a couple guys, maybe. Obviously, Ekholm is one guy that's been rumored a lot. The only issue with Matthias Ekholm that I wasn't thinking of until other people brought it up to me was the expansion, and you're not going to be able to protect him with the two years unless if you sacrifice somebody else or trade in the trade somebody that you would have had to protect in the first place. So then it cancels each other out because you traded somebody. <laughs> yeah. <you laughs> protected for uh, right. back home. So that's the only way that would work. Matthew Benning, on the other hand, who is right-handed, who I thought they should go after uh, in the offseason, he does have the second year. But the thing is, if you don't have to, if you don't protect Jeez. him and he gets picked, yeah. it's not like Jeez. losing an Eckholm. Yeah. yeah, where I don't think to get Benning – who's been solid this year, but is a minus five, but that's more just because of the Predators, in my opinion, to uh, anything else. Um, I'm with you. I think he's a guy you could get because if you don't protect him and he gets picked, uh, I think all you're trading for him might be like a fourth or a fifth. Something so you're like not that. Go, oh, darn. Like, yeah, right. Not, so, like, it's not going to be like if Ekholm gets picked an expansion, you're like, well, we just lost potentially our best defenseman since he is a veteran that's right. very consistent where Provorov is still 24. So if you get Ekholm, he might become the best defenseman on the team 
uh, right a not a tick notch above Pro Bowl, where um, that's where it's a little bit different um, there. But I think a Benning's a good right handed. That's a kind yeah. of keeps it simple defenseman that also can get the puck up the ice with the first pass. Um, so what do you think about him being? A I decent- like that. I like that because he's still young, twenty six. You know what I mean? Even and you're right. Even if he is get picked up, it's not a big deal. He's only making a million. I mean, that's what he signed for for this year and next year. So it's not like, and he's he's young enough where he's potentially going to be a top four defenseman. You know what I'm saying? But he's not quite there yet. So I mean, he's he's building to that point. You know what I mean? And you get him in the right environment and get him paired up yeah, with some of the right Benny's- players. Is probably being a four with a uh, good, uh, like a Muzzin or Ekholm or Jomerson type as his lefty defenseman, and then you have him as the righty defenseman. Yeah, uh, but like, who would you pair him that. up on the Flyers, though? You know what I mean? Like, would you put him with. Would, you could pair him with Provy. If you Provy, to. yeah. That would be a good pair with Provy. You could switch it out with Braun, and then Braun could move down lines. Exactly. So you could put him as the right-hander with Provy because the reason I think his numbers are a bit down, Jeremy Davies seems like a solid developing short 5'11", chemo team and embodied yeah. defense. I'm not comparing him to team and skill set-wise, it's just his body. His body, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little chemo bit smaller, Tiemann. a little bit, yeah, yeah. But yeah. having two, a young guy with Benning compared to a young guy like Provy who already, um, like I said in past videos of mine, almost seems like a veteran at only 24 just because of how smooth he's been in all the years of his career. He's a little bit down this year, but still performing pretty well. Um, I think that would really help Benning go back to the numbers he had when he was really impressing in Edmonton, where I don't think they should have even let him go. Yeah, right. Um, So I think he's a guy to get. I think he's really, to me, other than Ekholm, if you're going to somehow sacrifice somebody or trade somebody that cancels it out, he's the only guy with Nashville that I would uh, tout other than Ekholm because I think you want more surefire people where Benning's a little bit more there already and developed and so on and such forth, where Jeremy Davies, if you trade for him, they're not fully there yet. Alexander Carrier is still a question mark what he's going to become, and the same goes for uh, Frederick Allard as well. Um, Yeah. I don't know if you had anything else on Nashville. Uh, or if you to... I mean, aside from the you know the obvious, everybody's talking about the, the Matthias at home and all that other stuff. And I don't necessarily would have a problem if the Flyers were to make that move. I don't necessarily have that problem because if that necessarily exposes somebody that maybe okay. I mean, I would much rather try to get something for some of those people instead of just having them go away for nothing on the Flyers. You understand what I'm saying? So it makes more sense if you're going to be ringing up Nashville to be talking about this Benning player instead of Ekholm. Because Benning, I think, would be a much better fit in... I'm not saying that Ekholm wouldn't be a good fit at the Flyers. All I'm saying is, is that I think this Benning deal would be a much a much better deal It'll for be the Flyers. Deal. It's a cheap deal, and you don't have to worry about finding a way to protect Ekholm where Benning, I don't think they would be the first guy exactly. on the practice list in the first exactly. place um, coming from our team. So you'd probably be able to retain them in general, where they might end up taking, I don't know, if you leave Ghost exposed or something like that because of his offensive upside. And they obviously can pay being a first-year team a couple years of $4 million, which when he's performing well offensively like he is this year, that's why I think he should be in sure. His defensive numbers, mm-hmm. metric-wise, like A.B. said, might be down. He should be in just because of his offense. Uh, he going into the right system could end up being definitely easily worth that contract because that's a lower-value defense contract for if he's actually going right. Yeah, But, and now I, but that, I like that idea better, though. Yeah, I like the idea of getting a cheaper Benning and not having to worry because the only thing is – if you trade Patrick, obviously, in an Ekholm deal, he's someone you would have been protecting. Uh, well, no, he got the one-year deal, so I don't know how that would work with the expansion if you would have to protect him more since he's in the free agency if you sign him after the expansion draft. Yeah, they I'm, not sure how that, I'm not sure how that whole free agency thing works or, or anything like that, so I guess that's something we're going to have to get into. 
Yeah, it's something we'll have to look up and get back to people on. But I think uh, the next team we're moving to that is the most interesting because they have eight games behind the game leader in the league because of all their COVID uh, issues and uh, electrical issues um, is the Dallas Stars. Uh, the Stars, now that everybody, thank God, is doing well in Texas, uh, we wished everybody well. It's glad to see that stuff starting to get better and still not great for some that we see and we're hoping that for all those people it gets very good soon exactly. but it's very nice to uh see that stuff's trending right down there exactly. um but when it comes to the dallas stars they're interesting to see if they're going to move people in the first place uh just because of where their team's at since they have all those games behind they still easily if they go on a run could catch up but in terms of people I think the Flyers could go after. Klingberg has been in rumors I've read recently. I like John Klingberg, the way he slides the line, the way he performs offensively. But even um, I think he doesn't necessarily fit the mold of so of what we need. He's basically an already more developed version of Myers. Where what we hope Myers can become but a more defensively sound guy is Myers at his best like we saw last year where he can perform in the offensive zone zone but be more defensively sound Klingberg makes those mistakes in the defensive zone um similarly to guys like a Myers um but that's because Myers is young where for Klingberg that's kind of just been one of his career traits he's going to do really well in the offensive zone mm -hmm. before and try to perform very well in the defensive zone, but just because mm -hmm. of his style, could take risks that lead to mistakes. He just won't do it as much as Gus. So he's a very good player. I just think the Flyers need a more defensively focused defenseman. We have enough offensively focused guys that can then develop even more offensively. And Myers, Sanheim, Provy can do both sides. You have Gustafson on the team this year. You have Ghost. Uh, Zamola can do both sides when he comes yeah. on. This organization has enough offensively focused guys. Yeah, we and don't need any Klimberg, of them. Yeah, if you get Klimberg, you're giving up a lot, so you better not let him go when his contract expires after next year. So Exactly, exactly. So uh, let me throw a name at you here now, and, and I don't know if this is even a possibility or if it could happen or not. It, it It's just an idea I just wanted to throw at you here. It does say that he shoots left, but it says he plays right D. But the 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 Mirio Heiskanen, uh, what do you think about that? I mean, he, he has... Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think they'll trade him in a million years. And if you if they do, you're trading Cam York and probably two first-round picks at the just wondering. very least uh, because he's one of the best... He's uh, if you get him, you have Provy who's be, looked like a veteran when he first came up. Heiskanen's Dallas's version of that. As soon as he came in the okay. league, he's looked like he belonged in the league for the last five years, even though he's twenty one years old. So yeah. like he's just one of those guys. I hey, think. it was just it, it was McWorld. Yeah. I, I, no, yeah. he's one of my favorite defensemen in the league. If you could get him, he would be that dreamboat that I sometimes do throw into videos. So that's a good question. Then we'll bring, he would be that dream scenario trade. If you could get that done to get a, a Miro Heiskanen, um, where obviously if we went back to a uh, Nashville for a second, the dream scenario trade would be if they traded us Dante Fabro, who's a young right-handed developing defenseman, that would be nice. Um, but, uh, I don't see that necessarily happening. Uh, a guy that I look at that I think wouldn't be too hard to get that is defensive and has seven points this year, which is actually surprising, um, is Alexiak, I think, is a guy that's probably yeah. potentially on the block as he expires after this year. They'll probably want to get some assets for him if they don't think they're going places in a week or some change, if they don't trend in the right direction and they trend more to the left instead of the good side. Yeah, but, depending on what their um, next couple of games look like. Yeah, Exactly. Uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts about him. He's a big defenseman that just pounds people. He sticks up for his teammates. The Flyers need more of that. What do you think? Bring it. Bring it. Uh, you know, can't can't go wrong with that. Uh, I'm we, we have been clamoring for a defensive or a player on the team that is willing to be uh, the policeman that's willing to be the physical presence that the Flyers are lacking. And, and, and to bring somebody in like that. OK, pick me, pick me. Yeah. 
that's what they were hoping Samuel Morin became, but he had some injuries, and he's starting to become that now on defense for the Phantoms. He's looked very good, but you might want to develop him more. I think he could come up soon and get a chance and do that. Pouillot's done that good in the minors and may, and has been a first-round pick. Maybe he can be your Jared to Norty. Uh, I'm with like you. I agree. Dance video. But getting Alexiak brings you a proven veteran that Agreed. does exactly that. Agreed. So yeah, that's yeah. why I think he could be on our that was a, you know That's actually a really good point, too. And that might actually be more of a doable move. You know what I mean? And he would bring that kind of veteran presence in there, that that calmness in the room that is kind of needed, you know what I mean, that everybody's been missing about with Niskanen. And when we get to our forwards video, if we wanted to add that more veteran forward that um, kind of settles down the forward group and maybe brings more spunk, like in terms of fighting ability and not necessarily just actual physical fights, but fighting along the boards and all that to bring that energy. Battle, fight, wins fight. battles, a warrior. Yeah. Um, Alexiak only gets paid 2.1375. So that's a lower value for what he's been able to do this year. You have a lot of money to play with still on your hard cap, about over four something, I think, at that point, or right at four if uh, you were to able to acquire Alexiak. But now we can move into uh, one of your uh, family's uh, favorite teams. Um, <laughs> Chi Town. Yeah, one of the surprise teams of this year that I still personally believe until Patrick Laine really performs to a next oomph level um, since going to Columbus, and that team really starts to impress me. They have a better chance than them to make the playoffs. So we'll see uh, who ends up getting moved here and what they want to do due to the fact that they are a surprise squad. But and, coming into oh, the and season, they are rebuilding. <laughs> yeah. Coming into the season, they definitely expected to be trading people. Um, DeHaan's a defenseman I always have had interest in. With him, though, I feel like he has a better chance than a Benning to go in expansion where he has the two years for 4.5. So I'm uh, only staying away from him for simply that reason. I'm not sure if you agree with that because well, he locks up our expansion who we're going to be able to protect. Okay. Plus um, – he gets paid a little bit more at the 4.5 tag. Um, I think that both of those things kind of knock him out. Well, where you're, okay, I get what you're saying, but we're only going to probably only have to be on the hook for a quarter of that. Well, that's for, for this, this season. season. That's yeah. no, I mean, for this season. Right. That's this season. Yeah. And then if he doesn't get claimed, you have to pay him that 4.5 next, next year. Exactly. You would have to you would have to commit to that much for okay. a following season. He has one of the bigger tags. Yes. Connor Murphy. He was going to be the guy I was going to ask. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's the right D that is a righty defenseman. A big guy that clears the front of the net pretty well. He was actually a first-round pick in 2011 by the then Phoenix Coyotes. Um, and uh, he's performed pretty well this year as a defensive defenseman. Um, he's produced in the team points, though. He has 102 career points in 470 games. So he can do that, like, mini chip-in offense every here and again and score maybe five goals a season uh, like he has in the past. But he's the guy that's that just righty defenseman that's still young, first of all. Oh, and yeah. plays a defensive game and is a defensive defenseman. I think because he's only 27, he'll take a little bit more change to get via maybe your prospect pool or throwing in an extra third or maybe second round pick or something because you're trading for a 27 year old who's in his prime. So and, and he's to- in his he's in his transition contract. Yeah. And he's already yeah he's in his transition contract, but he also already has shown he's very consistent. Where Benning's a guy that's shown that he's a good surprise guy that's emerged. Where Murphy was a first round pick for a reason, took a while to blossom into showing that they thought they would get more offensive potential out of him when Arizona drafted him. But yeah. then he became a pretty solid, consistent defensive cat now, and that's a good thing to have as well. I'm with you. I would. I, that's who I was going to actually mention. You mentioned uh, uh, Calvin DeHaan. I was going to mention Connor Murphy because Murphy's actually a little bit cheaper, not that much, but still, I think that would be more of a more of a something that they might be able to go after. That's just the same as Ekholm, though. Yeah. You have to trade somebody in order to make it work expansion wise. You would have to trade somebody in the deal you were thinking you were going to protect expansion already. Right. 
Right, yeah. exactly. If you were to get Connor Murphy, yeah, you would have to change I don't up your lose Connor Murphy after trading for him after just this exactly exactly and i would be more than happy to pay him his 3.85 million dollars for next year as well too especially if i could lose somebody like a gustafson and a braun and a ghost or whatever now an interesting guy that's actually having a pretty darn good season uh for the blackhawks i'm sorry that's our phone going off in the background um for the Blackhawks is Nikita Zadorov has actually been pretty good for them defensively playing over 18 minutes this year. Um, and he's a restricted guy. So he affects the expansion a bit, but not to the degree of a guy that actually has a contract. Yeah. Because with restricted guys, they can claim them if they want in the expansion draft, but then that team has to worry about signing them. Right. So or, and paying you're more him. likely to, if you get as a door off, be able to keep him yourself if you want, because I doubt the Kraken are going to take somebody they then would have to sign when they're a first year team. Where the Flyers, if they do make a run after getting say as a door off, he would have more of a asset to want to stay with the Flyers as a contender rather than going to a first year franchise. Agreed. Uh, and that was a great point too, man. Good, good player to 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 select as well too, because. They're they're as they say they're in a rebuilding mode, and if they're looking to do that, because a, a, look, they've they've got some players that are going to be coming off the books that they're going to really going to be needing that are in the forward department, especially in their side. You know what I'm saying? And 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 they're going to need to have some of that you know money available for them to do so, and of which they do not have much. You see what I yeah. mean? So yeah. They are not going to be looking to take on big assets as far as trades are concerned. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to try to get as much for as little or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, Zadorov's always been, he's had a couple down seasons, like in 16, 17, um, especially in his career. Uh, but other than that, he's been a pretty consistent defensive defenseman. That's really the reason why his career plus minus is a minus nine, because he was a minus right. 20 that year. And as a second in his first full season, he was a minus mm -hmm. 10. Other than that, his worst has been a minus five and an injuredly played 22 game season of 15, 16 for the avalanche. So um, I think he's been better than people actually think from surface numbers. Just when you actually look into his stats more, He's also only 25. Right. So if you acquire him, he got picked in the first round for a reason, and it wasn't for his offense. Because go back and look at his numbers in Russia and look at his other numbers. It was because he pounds people. He's a defensive <laughs> guy. He's basically a blockade of a defenseman that actually can move a little bit. He's not great on his skates, but has got better as he's matured well, into a player well. now. He's just a truck out there. I was 6'6", 230 pounds. I mean, go out there and hit somebody. Okay. <laughs> That's what I need you to do. Exactly. But now we're going to get to who I think might move some defensemen. Where this is a team that's obviously more debatable because both Columbus and Chicago, just like Chicago's debatable, are the fence teams right now. Where I would say at this point um, – Nashville and Detroit are kind of out of it, where Dallas is still a fence team because of the games behind they are to have to make up for now, where if they, in the next week, don't make it up, then I would say they're a team that's definitely looking to trade the players we mentioned on Dallas, like the Alexiaks and others uh, of the world. Yeah, um, now, we'll move to our last team, though, for this video, as uh, we're entering our 30-minute mark here uh, to wrap up, which is the Columbus Blue Jackets, led by uh, Yarmo Kakalainen and, and Pirlo's favorite coach in the history of hockey, um, John Tortorella. Um, I don't know if that's true. I'm just kind of making fun of Pirlo because he always talks up John Exactly. Tortorella. And, 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 and uh, we always have to put the four-minute stopwatch on him. Yeah, so... You know but, what? I'll tell you what. I... I I think these guys have pretty much have made their moves already. Yeah, well, I think the obvious guy to get moved, Seth Jones has been in some rumors, but I don't see the Flyers trading for Seth Jones because that's going to take hell and high water pretty much to Ooh. acquire Seth Jones. Yeah, where that, I don't and that's a lot of money too. Yeah, all those assets for Seth Jones. Um, 
Gavrinkov's a lefty, but if you obviously could get him, he seems to be a good developing defenseman at only 25. He might not be a bad guy uh, to bring into your organization of Vladislav Gavrinkov, another guy out of Russia, um, a former six-round pick that they've developed, one of Kakalainen's foreign picks that people went, who the heck is this guy? And now they're like, oh, this guy's a pretty good guy. Um, so uh, he tends to do that pretty often, that guy. Um, so he's a guy that I don't think they would trade, but if they would, maybe you could get him. Dean yeah. Kukan has been good since going to Columbus, uh, the Swiss defenseman. Maybe you could acquire him. I don't know what you think of those two, if you could get a Dean Kukan or a Gavrinkov. They're both left-handed, but yeah. both more defensively good defensive in their own zone. And See, that's what uh, we need. Play at least 13 minutes a night for each of them. Yeah. See, that's what we need. Uh, we need that player. It's, it's not necessarily, you know, and, and you have to kind of look at, okay, well, that money is not that bad. That's pretty decent money. It's not somebody that we necessarily need to worry about as far as protecting, you know, at, at the uh, for the expansion draft per se. You know what I mean? I, I've also seen uh, Savard's name mentioned as well uh, in the mix uh, with that. Um, yeah. You know what? I'll be real honest with you, okay? I would much rather have any one of the two players that you selected, uh, Kukinen or um, Gavrinkov. Gavrinkov. Uh, I would much I rather have Gavrinkov. You would have to protect actually, though, because they gave him a sweet, sweet deal of two point eight million until the end of twenty two twenty three. Where that's True. a deal I feel the Kraken if you leave him open would go, this is a guy that seems to be developing into a pretty consistent defenseman. We should probably snag. And so especially like, at 25, yeah. I feel like you... Now, Gavrinkov, I feel like you might be able to, if Nashville... Or not Nashville. If uh, the uh, Blue Jackets really do want to add more to their forward group, especially down the middle, um, you might be able to give them Patrick and see if they're just take him. And if they don't just take him, you might be able to see if they take maybe him in a third. Because if they believe in Patrick's potential, if they're one of those organizations, because there's been, when I've read like all the like NHL trade rumor stuff and different things, people are still interested in Patrick because they see potential if you can get him churning again. Uh, maybe they're one of those organizations. I don't know. But if they are, maybe you could give them Patrick and only a like middle round pick and then you would be able to uh, get going from there. But yeah, I don't dislike David Savard. I think uh, he's just not as good as he's not what he used to be anymore. He's still a solid defensive defenseman. He's also hasn't been this year. The For some reason, Columbus just hasn't been performing as consistent defensively as a whole because Seth Jones' stats look solid when you look at them from the surface. But defensively, he's been uh, very much lesser this year. Rowinski's numbers are actually good. His plus minus is only down because of uh, the inconsistency of his partner. Gavrinkov's right. been their best, um, one of their most consistent guys, as well as Kukin. So that's why I said you could get one of them. Or if you want to get one of the biggest surprise players of the NHL season thus far, you could reunite with the 30-year-old Canadian uh, that's played very good defensively this year, Michael Delzato. <laughs> Uh, please no <laughs> is that is that look I don't have anything against Delzato and I thought he was a pretty decent player but he was spotty here at best at Philadelphia he he was in well, and out of the lineup most of his career He's exactly kind of you're up one year down type exactly. guy and yeah. then he kind of went to the AHL the last year, couple years and then has found it again in in a, so I think he might have it, but I feel like for him, his best case is staying in Columbus, too, because that's yep. where they figured it out for him. Yep. But I would definitely go for Kukin or Gavrinkov. Savard Agreed. I would get, though, just because if you can mix Savard in, you don't have to worry about him at all with expansion. Yeah, he is he's that just a rental guy, and he's a rental that's only on one year. I don't think or take as much to get. So I would go for him. He just wouldn't be one of my top of my listers. Yeah, I agree. But I, but I would go for him. But again, I thank you for joining for this video. We ended up going a bit long on this one. That's but okay, this, man. 
Yeah, this has been the uh, Philadelphia Flyers, the grittiest take, the Discover Central Division defenseman that Steele, Flyers, and I, Professor Joe, recommend for the Flyers to potentially be able to get from each of those teams. Again, these videos are just us examining the teams we think will trade for the will trade defensemen and who could potentially help the Flyers. It's not necessarily us saying we are in love with that one individual and they should 100% <laughs> or, get or him. Or that this is actually yeah. happening. <laughs> yeah, or that this is actually happening. It's just us saying these are guys, if you're looking to talk to our that opinions. team, you could present them for, in our yeah. opinion. So I yeah. uh, yeah. thank you all for joining us. We appreciate the support. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm trying to get to 125 by the end of next week at 121 now, I believe. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this edition of The Grittiest Take. Enjoy all the great hockey, and go Flyers. Let's start making a comeback in these standings. Peace out, everybody.